They wrote me off and I ain't like that. So I'ma fight that. The bad man. Back. Right when you thought that it was safe to relax. What you gotta scratch that. The bad man. Alright, man. It's the uh Big Lat show. We're here with Miss Chisa Johnson. Yeah. Loan officer, mortgage um officer. She helps um People get into their first homes, their second homes, their third homes. Fifth and six. <laughs> and investment properties as well. That's what's up. Let's start from the beginning. Well, how much time you got? <laughs> um, uh, born in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, mom moved here when I was, I think, about seven years old. Um, so I went through all of my schooling um, in Decatur, Georgia. So... Um, yeah, when my mom first, uh, came here to Atlanta or whatever, um, family members was like, yeah, 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 you can come, you can come. And then she gets here and then they like, oh no, nah, you can't come. So her and her children didn't have nowhere to stay. So literally had to stay in her car until somebody, uh, seen her with their children and, uh, invited her to their church and. They, and they collected, luckily it was like a Wednesday night services. And so they collected enough money and she was able to get her first apartment here in Atlanta. We stayed right there off of um, Fisher Road over there by Four Seasons. So, you know, from there. Um, like I said, grew up in Decatur, went to Columbia High School, then finished at Redan. And um, let's see. Uh, started working at Six Flags and <laughs> met my husband, uh, tattoo extraordinaire artist uh, Mario Johnson, other no formerly known as uh, Needlehead Inc. So uh, he and I, we've been together for 23 years, 20, 24. This will be the 24th year. That we've been together nonstop. So we have a daughter. She's twenty. She's turning twenty-two. Kaylin. She's last year of a uh, school at Georgia State. She's a uh, uh, going to. She's uh, majoring in finance. Um, so I started my career uh, fresh out of high school. And I thought I wanted to be in the medical field. I thought that I wanted to be in, um, I thought I wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to help people. That's a passion I've always had, is to help people and realize that, hey, this ain't for me. When the first person died, and I'm like, oh, they do that when they die? Oh, uh-uh. Put me behind a desk. So I, I still like to be in, like being in the medical field, but I just didn't want it to be that hands-on. So I became, I worked my way up, became an admissions director, and that was stressful, having to can, keep a nursing home full when a lot of people die. And you know, people go in threes. So uh, when, when it, that job became, I became jaded, and I was no longer... Um, concerned with the person dying, I'm like, damn, I got to, I got to go find somebody else. So I knew I had to get out of that business. Um, friend of ours, a good friend of ours had introduced us to a, a company that offered financial services. And so that now we're like in two, 2005. And so really enjoyed it. Um, made some good money, but then the market crashed. And when that crashed, Nobody was buying insurance. Nobody was refinancing on their homes. They was losing homes. Um, nobody was investing. So had to pick up that old resume, brush it off, and get back into the medical field. Because that was once until now, that was one field that you were always guaranteed to have a job. Until 2020, 2020 that pan the pandemic hit, pandemic hit and, you know, it it really shook the medical field. So, like I said, I was able to get promoted throughout um, the medical field. Like I said, I did a lot of administration work. I did a lot of um, patient finances. Made my way all the way up to management. 
with the doctor's office. And um, before then, I worked in management through a bigger corporation. You really didn't get to see the um, the grand scheme of things because you're part of such a big organization. So when I went to a doctor's office, it was a smaller corporation, smaller company, um, tons of, of providers, tons of doctors and stuff like that. But I was able to see the top and, you know, it was owned by one doctor and he had several doctors working for him. And someone made a comment, oh, Dr. So-and-so, yeah, he's in granddad mode. He's not practicing. And it clicked. I'm sitting here busting my behind for his financial future and and his um grand generational wealth okay the market's good right now let me go ahead and get back in the game so at this point now you need licenses and stuff like that because there's a lot of red tape because a lot of people took advantage during the wild wild west is what we call it the wild wild west times a lot of people took advantage of you know people in the mortgage industry which caused the you know the 2000 was it 2007 2008 mortgage crisis and um so you know like i said i had to get back in the game and what um intrigued me is be to to do this and really put um, my ass to the fire. Can I crush? Cause yeah. I just did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Put my ass to the fire is my husband has, you know, a serious medical condition and I literally had to ask for time off. And I'm like, man, I'm grown. Like what? What? I got, so you, so I need to schedule my time that my husband's supposed to have major surgery around when you see fit for the company. Yeah. Okay whatever. So basically you're not going to, I just wanted to be able to take control of my time again and be able to be there for my husband, because what you're not going to do is make me choose between my family and my job. And so, like I said, wanted to, you know, go ahead and, and get back out there and, and make it happen. So I'm currently a loan officer with Select Mortgage Group. It's located in McDonough, Georgia, and it is black owned. We are we we serve everyone, but our niche is being able to help those who wouldn't normally or believe that they wouldn't normally be able to qualify for a mortgage. So that's from people with bankruptcies on their credit, um, foreclosures, um, self-employed people who has not filed taxes and God knows how many years. And, um, you know, people with some adverse challenges on their credit that a lot of times in a lot of cases, they rule themselves out without even talking to a specialist like myself to show you and and help prepare a roadmap to home ownership. So, you know, I really enjoy it. The most rewarding part of what I do is once we are down to the wire and we're and I tell a client, hey, guess what? We got to clear the close. Congratulations. Man, that's the most rewarding feeling to just be able to tell someone that and just hear they their reaction is like, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. Oh my God, it's so, man, that's so rewarding. I get a kick out of it every time that I tell someone that, I promise you that feeling never gets old. When I tell someone, hey, you, congratulations, we've gotten to clear the clothes. I'm gonna go ahead and schedule your closing. And it's, like I said, the most rewarding feeling that it's like a roller coaster ride that you enjoy over and over and over and over and over again, you know. So, um, you know, that is um, pretty much my jam. Okay, so I guess I'll start asking the questions now. 
Okay. With the questions. Yeah, man. All right. So you said you originally from uh, Shreveport. Shreveport. Right. So did you get to spend time in Shreveport? Yeah. Every summer. Almost every summer until I was able to decide not that I didn't want to go down there anymore. But yeah, every summer, um, part of me of who I am, I, because I, I always went down there to visit my grandmother and my aunts and, and stuff like that. So they pretty much, the, the woman you see now, had they had a whole lot to do with, with my upbringing from, you know, how I raised my daughter. You know, just just different stuff that they helped me become who I am. Good or bad? Good and bad. <laughs> um, you know, we were you know we were psychologically raised different in the in the African American community. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of stuff that we was raised, and I mean, I can call out different stuff that you probably relate to. That you know, you know, back then people just they did what they thought was best. You know what I mean? You know, when bad, when good, whatever. But it ended up being, we end up transferring these emotional scars or, or these, um, you know, not, or in some cases, curses, like generational curses from the, the way we were psychologically trained from generations and generations and generations back. You know what I mean? Like f from as something as simple as, if you sweep somebody's feet, what that mean? Going to jail. Exactly. <laughs> so you know, just oh, stuff. <laughs> you going to jail, and, and, and into the that actually like sweep my feet and see what happened. See what happened. You sweep my feet, right? But um, you know, just it's good and bad. Good and bad things that you know I've um tried to correct and try my best not to do that same thing with my daughter. If that makes sense, and you know, just want to uh, uh, change the change the uh, break the curse. That's for sure of uh, being in poverty, being born, having another generation of in our family in our bloodline being born into poverty. So you know, definitely changing that, and it started. It's starting with my daughter. Um, man, she's amazing already investing at 23, no, 22, I'm sorry, already has an investment por portfolio. You know what I mean? I, don't, I, I Now at this point, I tell her, hey, just, here, here go the money. Just, just do something with it. Do something with it. Because, I mean, I didn't learn this stuff until, like, third, in my late 30s. Yeah, you know what I mean? Cool. So, you know, me being able to just guide her, as far as I, I can get her and point her in the right directions of where she wants to be in life, man. Shoot. I can't wait to see what my grandkids is gonna be like. Yeah. You um you ever take your daughter to visit your family? Actually not in a long time. I haven't because it is a long ride to Shreveport, Louisiana. That's right about right. Now it's like eight. Eight? Yeah. So we haven't we haven't um did it in a while, but I do plan to go hopefully before the year is out of course 2020 kind of like killed everybody's plans like we had so much stuff planned as far as traveling that we couldn't do so um you know just trying to get back in the swing of things as far as traveling so yeah i definitely want to uh have her kind of know her roots and stuff like that so which she do I already like i teach her and stuff like that but just to, she knows my family and she you know she, uh, they know her and she, but to just spend time with them and stuff like that. They come like for graduations and big stuff. And then we'll go down there for big stuff, funerals. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we definitely gotta, we gotta break that. You know what I'm saying? But man, it's just, and it's expensive flying to Shreveport. It's expensive. This is a small town. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, either you gotta fly into Dallas. So that's, and that can kind of, that can get up there a little bit. You got to catch it a good time. Let's get into your profession. Yeah, all right, let's get in. Okay, so you are, by title, a loan officer. By title. Okay. So, 
Tell us more about what a loan officer actually does. So basically, in residential lending, not to pat my self on the back but pat yourself on the back eh, eh, eh. so we we make it happen if unless a person is paying cash for a house we're the ones that make it happen now real estate agents they are great at what they do don't get me wrong but we're the ones that we're, we're the backbone of we make it happen so you know we're the ones that set the tone for how this process is going to go you know and i do my best to give excellent customer service to all of my clients all of my real estate partners um you know i just so to answer your question what do we do we basically help a person obtain the money that is needed to buy themselves a house basically so if you in a sense if you want to call me the money lady that that'd be nice Wait, That'd wait. be nice. If I wanted to call you, the yeah, money you want to call, call yourself the money, self proclaimed money bag, yeah. the money lady. <laughs> I'm where the money resides. Okay, I got you. <laughs> so I come to you, right? And my credit is horrible. What would you tell me the first step should be? Well, first of all, we need to define horrible because it may be horrible. You may, may not be that bad to me. Now, in some cases, there are some people I've been like. Yeah, yeah, I ain't going to tell you no. I'm just saying not right now. Fix this, do this, do that. Let's check up with each other in about six, eight months, see where we are. And then I've, you know, paved some more of the path for you. Um, but a lot of people, they think they think the worst of themselves or they think the worst of their credit. And a lot of times it's not that bad. It's just usually simple fixes. Hey, pay this down. I have a, a, a app that... I utilize it can tell you, okay, tell me, it tells me to tell you, do this, and then your score should go up X amount of points. Or, okay, fix this situation that's on there, and we should be ready to roll, or, you know, whatever have you. And like I said, some in some cases, I got access to lenders who don't care about none of that. Now, that does take a great deal of cash <laughs> to do that. But, you know, like I said, with foreclosures and, and bankruptcies and stuff like that, I can get you in a home with as low, as, I mean, one day out of your bankruptcy, one day post-bankruptcy. Right. Takes money to do that. But, hey, some people, you know, may have it. So, and surprisingly, there are a lot of people out there that do. So Mario is my real estate agent, mm -hmm. and he tells me, he said, uh, I have a pretty good loan officer. Mm -hmm. you, he's checked my stuff. He's taken me to some homes, and I tell him, I say, hey, man, I hate I wasted your time, but I got 15 credit, credit cards on my thing that I need to pay off. Can I still come to you for help before we start doing the whole loan process? And can you help me get that stuff straight? Or sh I can only come to you if I know I'm about to buy the house in a week. If Mario is a smart real estate agent, he's going to send you to me first before he takes you anywhere. Okay. So you don't even get to look at any houses until you are what is called pre-qualified or pre-approved. So basically, I'm going to do my homework. You just send, I'm going to say, hey, apply for the, for the loan. Okay, you're going to do the application. Once you do the application, then at that point, um, I'm going to run your credit, see where we are. And if it's a go, like there's not a whole lot we need to do. If it's a go, then I'm going to say, send me these documents. Because I have to verify what you're saying. I have to verify you saying your income is such and such. I have to verify, you know, you know. Whatever you're saying, I need to be able to verify it. We got to prove it because not only you have to prove to me, we also have to prove to the lender. We also have to make sure that you have the ability to repay this loan because in this market, you're asking someone to give you somewhere north of $250,000, so a quarter million dollars. I need to verify and make sure that you have the ability and the, and the capacity to you know, be able to repay this loan. That, that's the, uh, the key word, capacity. Right. A lot of people have the ability, but are they going to try to? Probably 
And you know what? And throughout that process, I I find out very soon will you be serious enough to uh to to take care of what you say you're gonna do your obligations and and your credit report will tell me your character. That's what it's for. So I don't know. Okay, all right. You have apartment complexes. You have this on here, like you have housing events on your credit. Then it kind of lets me know, like, because most people will not, like, no one wants to be homeless. You know what I mean? Like, don't but choose that. You know what I'm saying? Like, bump it. I'm not going to pay my rent. I'm just going to, they, they put me out. They put me out. No, nobody usually chooses that. So there's usually some type of misfortune that has happened, you know, whether you got sick or, you know, you got laid off. Um, but if you have multiple housing events on your credit, then it, tells me okay are you skipping out on your leases did you you know what i mean okay i'm gonna ask about it and i'm gonna ask tough questions about it like what happened here i can understand one sometimes two if you got four five and six uh, you need to get your life together <laughs> before we start asking people for a quarter million dollars you know what i mean uh, get get yourself together so have you had people that they go? Yes, uh, yes, sure have. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. I sure have. That is insane. Okay, so back to the the bum that's skipping out on his homes. So you got somebody? What's your name? Oh, well you? Uh, I just said something. Uh, <laughs> so you got somebody to come to you? They got. For housing events, as you say, on their credit, but everything else is good. Like they, they don't have no delinquent credit cards. They ain't got no. Uh, they don't have any. Sorry, let me get my grammar straight. They don't have any student loans, anything crazy. What's the next process in getting them approved? We those? need to address the, these housing events. So how do you go about doing? Um, that? sometimes. Um depending on their age of those housing events. Um, it though, that's a, that's not a, I can't give a cookie cutter answer to that because I would really have to dive in and see the, the nature of those housing events. Oh, well that's, that's a simple answer. <laughs> that's simple enough. We just got to see how much of a dirt bag you are. <laughs> you are? <right? Yeah. laughs> You kind of big. You be scared me standing behind me now. <laughs> you know, seven feet, eight hundred pounds. Uh, <laughs> don't do it like that. Don't do it like that. <laughs> now Mario been a swole dude since I met him. Uh, so, <laughs> so, I, I get Travis. My name is TravisWilliams.com. Mm-hmm. My real estate agent, my brother, and he say, "All right, you need to go to a loan officer and give me these five, six loan officers." Say, "No, I'm going to Chiefs." She's gonna help me out. Mm-hmm. So the house I want is in. I'm about to say somewhere ghetto. I'm about to say Riverdale. The house I want is where I live at now, man. Done. Mm-hmm. So two hundred seventy-five thousand, eight bedrooms, pond, all that good stuff. You you must have bought it during a crash or something like that, because that's definitely <laughs> <laughs> this not my, now. <laughs> this is my imagination, my fancy. Don't. <laughs> You, Don't break down my I mean, I mean, you must. That must have been in like 1980 oh, song. No, nah, for the eight is expensive. It and is. It, it's there. expensive. It's expensive. And I have right now. We're we're dealing with a market like no other. Like sellers are. It's it's a seller's market, and it's almost sad that these. Buyers, I, we have more buyers than we have inventory. Really? Right, right. So, one particular house may be on the market for a day, two days, three days at the most, and that house may receive multiple offers. And I'm talking about somewhere north of twenty offers, right? And not only just offers, they're offering up to I, the craziest I heard from one of my clients who's looking, she's shopping in the McDonald area and she, her offer got outbeated because that, the other person who's 
offering offered seventy thousand dollars over asking price. Really? They're waving. Buyers now are so desperate. They're waving all of their protection um, clauses that would protect them. In these instances, they're waving all of that just to get the contract. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm a vet too. Does that mm-hmm. help? Or, it helps or? you a whole lot. So how I can do. Um, uh, there's no down payment required on a VA loan, and we can get you in there. I can get you in there with the score as low as 500. Really? <laughs> Come really? Come on, 515. Well, come on through. Come on. Hey, look, look, look. Look, come on in. Well, come on in. You better stop it. Don't be judging me. Come on in now, with the fast. What, I don't know what my school is. To be honest. You know what? The crazy thing is when we brought our house, we didn't know either. And it wasn't until me, uh, my real estate agent and I worked Christmas Day uh, at the hospital together. And we were just talking about it. And I was like, child, I ain't... Girl, I ain't finna buy no house. Because we had been through two attempts where it didn't happen for us. And at that point, you know, because you get, it, we, it's a business transaction. You know what I mean? And But it's so emotional. And so we, we were let down twice. Yeah. So we were like, bump it. We just going to rent forever. It's okay. It ain't that bad. Rent 725. It ain't, ain't that bad. We just going to rent forever. And so she was like, no, y'all know you need to talk to Walter, which is the guy that I actually work for now, he was my my mortgage broker then, and I got such good services that I wanted to, you know, once I decided to get back in the game, I wanted to work with him because I got an ex, I had an excellent um, experience. So anyway, long story short, she hooked us up with him. And we met him uh, the day after Christmas at, a, at Jason's Deli on Camp Creek, and we were about business. And I came up with like 50,000 questions, and I drilled. Mario was like, Chisa drilled him. And we was asking all kinds of questions, and he was like, cool breeze, like, yeah, this, this, and this. And he was very calm. In fact, he was very calm. I was so anxious because I'm an anxious person. So I was anxious the entire process. And he was always so calm and very calming. Um, and he's like, calm down. It's going to be all right. You know, he was just like that. So um, he, like I said, he answered all our questions. And then me and Mario, we looked at each other and was like, balls to the wall. <laughs> That's what we say when we was like, take off and go. So we did it. And it was... It was the easiest process working with him. And I'm like, uh, I, I need to tell you, I haven't found my tax in like three years. He was like, no problem. I just find you a lender that don't require. Hey, Amen. So, I, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're looking for a cre- creative financing, That's you, definitely, you definitely want to come with us. You definitely want, you definitely want to call me. Okay. I I, I will be. Because <laughs> <laughs> my wife, like I told you, I don't know what's going on with my mic. If you keep seeing me unplugging and stuff, she bad. Mic keep going up. Well, we're we going to have to fix that. About to buy a new one. There you go. All right. So, like I said, my wife said she's going to leave me in three years for uh, Asian midget. Well, she might have well, if she gonna, if it's that petty, she might well go and go now. She ain't going nowhere. That's how I would kill both of them. Uh, hey, I help you. Yeah. It's on Facebook. The world heard it, and hey. she better be, we ain't friends on Facebook. Y'all didn't hear me say I help you, did you? No, why you doing if I call, he gonna be like, what at? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's even worse. Uh, Three more questions. We'll get you out of here. Hey, I'm here all day. <laughs> so we got the we got the the um all the information that you need. Mm-hmm. What is the number one thing that will hinder me from moving forward? The number one thing that would hinder a person from moving forward. Um, there's not a cookie cutter answer to that. I would say you. Sometimes some people can get in their own ways and some people don't want to take my advice. 
I would say you, the person, if you're willing to work and you're willing to, you know, do what it takes, there should be nothing to stop you. Really? Usually, usually it's the person that hinders them. We were we were our own worst enemy. Like we just knew we we not going buy a house. And then when he checked our credit, I'm going doubling back. But when he checked our credit, we was off in the sevens, deep in the sevens. And we did, both of us, and we didn't even know it. Well, I ain't no one in the seven nothing. You never know. You could be. Uh, it's not as bad as you if, probably think it is. If I'm a seven, it's a seven. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the sevens. Huh? Seventy. <laughs> maybe seventy-five. Maybe I don't know. But uh, I know it's horrible. But um, it's okay. It's not no such thing. <laughs> so, how many houses? What's your record for houses in the market? In a month, I mean, like four. That's, that's good. a that's a yeah. That I mean, you said it like that one good. I mean, that's like like two, three, four, four. That's good though. Yeah. Especially. If I mean, sometimes like fight. that's that's like pushing through, like getting it through. But the pipeline is full, so that's what you can get closed, you know, in a month or whatever. But you know. It may, like, I may have some people that are six, eight months out. You know what I mean? Like, right now, I have five buyers out there looking right now. That I should be able to close if the market wouldn't what it is. Like, I should have, they should be closing sometime next month. So they, they all. But we're not closing. They hear every last one of them are pre approved. And then I have agents referring to me. So we're getting those done. And also I have a lot of refinances. So, you know, which are, those are, cause they already got their house. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to, you know, you, either you're trying to change the, the your rate. You're getting, trying to get a lower rate, which is a good time to get a lower rate, or you want to decrease the term, the term that you have to pay the, pay that house off. Or, or you can cash out. So you can take a little money out. Is the you were saying that it's a lot of it's less inventory than it is buyers. Is mm-hmm. that the reason why rental rates have went up? Probably so. And then also, um, June thirtieth, the lift, well, the the eviction eviction um, protection will be lifted June thirtieth. So a lot of people about to be put at. <laughs> <laughs> so. Cause they ain't paid their rent or they haven't paid their mortgage, and these people gonna come back for their money. Now, I don't know if they may put you on a payment plan, but you know, a lot of people may not be able to. They may say, "Okay, we'll give you, you know, eight months to pay it off, or ten months, or however long they decide to give you to pay off those rears, right?" So, okay, if a mortgage, if your mortgage is forty-five percent of your income. Then how in the world could you double it and still pay all your other bills? Because okay. they may say, okay, you, you pay your mortgage and then you pay, you know, extra towards the the rears or you know whatever they decide, whatever payment plan. Some people may not be able to to do that. So it may it's a good market right now where people where the market's really good. So if you wanted to sell, you could probably you know make some money and still pay off those rears. So you may have people, I don't know, cause that, that's a real estate thing, but that may be, you know, what some people are going to choose is to sell before, you know, it gets bad. So I foresee, we foresee like the prices of houses probably starting to come back down hmm. soon. Um, and maybe more inventory open up, but if people are are selling their houses and and going to rent, then yeah, that's probably why rent is so high. Like that apartment, you know, that first apartment that we rented, the first one you came by and you got your you got that first tattoo from Mario. Mm-hmm. God damn, uh, <laughs> they, yeah. We when we started out there, I think the rent was like six eighty or or six seventy three, something like that. Now I called for a friend. That same place, nineteen fifty. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm like, where in the world? Like, I'm thinking back, like, that little bitty apartment, 1,150 square feet, $1,900. Like, that's a good 280 Like, a house note. Uh, that's a house worth about 280000 Yeah, the, um, before 200, we moved where we live at now, um, the house we were staying in McDonald's, it was sixteen ten, And when the lease was getting ready to be up, they sent me the, the new lease. It had went up to 1965 $300. Like, yeah, man. I told my wife, I said, no. But the place we live in ain't no better. It's like thirteen ninety five. So she was like, we can't keep paying this amount of money. You got to get me in the house for I find me a next So $1,300, would that's about two a $200,000 house. I ain't looking two, for three. that. Uh, we'll talk. Two, two, well, she, she two wants a ranch, three bedroom, some small with some horses and cows in the back. So y'all want land? I don't want no land. I ain't trying to cut no grass. Uh, well, if you have livestock, they can eat it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing, and it's 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 it's, it's not that simple to get a residential <laughs> house with livestock on it either. <laughs> right, you can probably do like a USDA. <laughs> she, no. she really she be thinking, huh? I don't want no horses, no pigs, because I ain't cleaning up nothing. <laughs> they gonna get shot. Well, dead. the pigs can eat the cleanup. Yeah, they gonna, anything. Yeah, they're gonna get. They're gonna be the horses and the and the cows can eat the grass. They keep your lawn cut. Uh, get you some goats too. Goats well, cut the grass. Everything got they're gonna get ate. So <laughs> it's, not, right, no it's not good for the be around me. I'm gonna get you out of here on this last question. Okay. I like I said, no rush. We can. I can. We can talk all day. I'm a talker. <laughs> and then I'm gonna let you give everybody your information. Okay. So, like I said, I'm a vet. My credit good. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to get a house. What's the first step? The first step is your credit's good. We're going to get you pre-qualified. And then you go out and start shopping. That's it. That's that it. Easy. Especially if your credit good. Okay. It's I'm credit or cash. <laughs> my credit bad. What's my first, what's what's the first shop? Stop All right. For me to do? First thing we need to do, see what's bad about it. And how can we fix it? How can we rectify the situation? And then once we get you where you need to be, in terms of being ready to buy a house, you go shopping. Just that simple. Give everybody your social media and all your information. I am Chisa Johnson, mortgage loan originator on Facebook. And also I am Chisa Johnson underscore loan underscore officer on Instagram. So that's a, that's a lot. But if you just put in Chisa Johnson, you'll find me either way. It's not, it's only two of us. And I'm in Georgia. And the other one's in Virginia. Yeah, that's a long way from Georgia. Exactly, it is. I well, I you thank coming. you. No, thank you. I appreciate you. you, man. And we're going to get that. We got to come up with a name for the new podcast. Yes, yes. Um, I figure out something. But the best thing, because a lot of times I'm so much, I spend so much time on my, on working on loans, I don't have time to check my social medias. So give me a call. 404-643-5573. That's the best way to reach me. I usually have my phone on my hip. So I'm usually with him all the time. You sure you, you, sure you want to give people your, get, your number? I, I, Mark, don't I, I answer your phone? That's the best way to get me. Because, I mean, it may be a day or two before I check my my DM. Because I don't... I, I do my best. I tell them I'm going to do better. 2021, I'm supposed to do better with my social medias and stuff like that. But, yeah, just give me a call because my phones are usually right there with me. So text, call, whatever, it's fine. I'd rather you call anyways because, like I said, I don't have time. You want me to be on social media all day or you want me to work on your loans? Which one? <laughs> you want me to get you to the closing table or not? <laughs> This 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 what you gotta do with every day, huh? Every day. She she up she up going a thousand every day, huh? Hustler. <laughs> uh, what do you call me a hustler? A, a hustler. Oh, a hustler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got a shirt that say always hustling. Yeah, hustling, but not like a hustler like hustling in the street. Not like they don't hustle you out of something, but a hustler like when your coach or you play sports or something like that. And that coach said hustle, like get your head down that field. That kind of hustle, a I, sense of urgency. I heard the Shreveport come out of you then. What? Get your head down the field. Get your head down the field. That's everywhere. <laughs> I spent more joy of my time here 
In Decatur, Georgia. What, what do you mean, hi? See Flatheads. <laughs> yep, we made that see Flathead. Thank you, Chish. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. <laughs> I'm a fan of that body of mine. Yeah, I'm saying that. Oh, they wrote me off and I ain't like that. So I'm a fight that. The bad man. Right when you thought that it was safe to relax.